This took place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My parents bought a duplex on a corner lot in about 1992. I was only four. Many strange things happened throughout my childhood, and these are the ones that I remember. When my family first moved in, we would often hear people talking in the attic and running around, speaking in Hmong and kids crying. Sometimes we would hit the ceiling with the broom, or my mom would play Christian songs sang by a famous pastor. The noises would stop and then continue every day for a while. Eventually, over time, these strange occurrences stopped. On one occurrence, my dad used to work second shift and during the summer. My siblings and I would stay up and wait for him to come home. We lived upstairs in the duplex. We could hear when someone comes up the stairs and opens the door. That night, we heard footsteps coming up the stairway, and then the door would open, and we would all scream that our dad was home. However, we were greeted with an empty doorway. Afraid, we ran and shut the door, locking it. It was only until an hour later that my dad finally showed up. As the youngest kid, I remember I was about seven years old at the time. My older brother and sisters were in middle school and high school. I was always the first to get home. When I got home, I could hear kids crying. It sounded like a newborn baby crying in the attic. I remember until this day that my mother was telling the baby in Hmong to stop crying and telling him or her that she also loves him too. Ever since that, every day I waited on the stairs until my brother and sister got home before heading into our house. We have a large family, so my dad converted our pantry room into a bedroom. I shared it with my brother. My aunt and uncle came to stay with us from Colorado. It was about 10 a.m., and my uncle asked me if my brother and I were looking for something since he saw a boy walk into the room looking for something but left eventually. My aunt also witnessed the same thing. Both my brother and I said that it wasn't us. We were grown at the time. Why would we go into the room while they were still in the bed? They shook it off like nothing happened, although they decided to visit my cousins and slept around for the remainder of their stay. I was in high school around this time. I was sleeping in my room one night, but being a chicken, I couldn't fall asleep that night for some reason. I heard my parents' bedroom door open, and I heard what sounded like a couple of creaks like someone was walking through the kitchen. They went to the bathroom but never flushed the toilet. The person then proceeded to head back to bed in my parents' room. About five minutes later, I woke up to go pee. There was no pee in the toilet or pee marks around the toilet. My dad was notorious for not lifting up the toilet seat and cleaning up his mess. I went to my parents' room and asked if my dad had gotten up to use the bathroom. Both my parents answered no. I went back to bed but could not fall asleep. Then I heard someone walking closer and closer to my bedroom and sitting on our heater. I got my metal baseball bat and ran out looking for the person, but I found no one. I headed back to my bedroom and eventually fell back asleep. The next morning though, I got really sick and didn't go to school for a few days. My parents prayed for me and eventually I got better after a few days. One day, my dad was smoking on the back porch. He said he saw a Hmong lady in Hmong clothes walking towards the house. He didn't think anything of it. After a week, he told the guy who lived in the downstairs duplex about this event. My dad asked if he saw a lady walking from the back to the front in Hmong clothes and asked if it was his relative. The guy answered that it could have been his dead aunt since he was in charge of her funeral and sending her to the afterlife. Eventually, after 18 years of living there, we moved downstairs. Everything calmed down. Everyone got married and we all moved out. A few years ago, my parents sold the house to some people. I hope they never get to experience the stuff that we went through.
My grandparents used to live in a very large duplex in Milwaukee. Most of the hauntings happened on the second floor, and it was really cold upstairs all the time. The few times that I went upstairs to look for people and found it empty, I would turn around and run downstairs as fast as possible. It was a hostile environment and you just knew something was there. One of my aunts had a room upstairs and she hung out upstairs by herself a lot. She was in her late teens and would often stay up late talking to guys on the phone or watching Tyler Corn. One night, she fell asleep in the living room. In the middle of the night, around 3 a.m., she woke up because the TV static suddenly made a lot of noise. As she groggily looked at the TV, the channels started changing. The remote control was right by her hand, so she reached out and turned off the TV and went back to sleep. Within moments, the TV turned on again and the channel started changing rapidly and the volume got louder and louder. She got really scared, screamed, and ran into her bedroom. The adults tried to convince her that TVs have timers and they just turn on by themselves sometimes. Ever since then, she was scared to be upstairs by herself and didn't stay up until late. Another one of my aunts, who was much younger than the one I just mentioned, slept in the bedroom that was located off of the kitchen on the second floor. She would always ask someone to sleep with her in her room. As a kid, I didn't realize it, but the reason why she never wanted to sleep alone was that she always got sat on every night. Not only that, but her bed would actually shake. It would move and vibrate as if someone was violently shaking it. The thing was that no one actually woke up or saw the bed shake for a long time, so none of her siblings believed her. One night, months later, her brother saw her struggling in her sleep and the bed shaking, so he finally believed that she was telling the truth. She moved into a different room upstairs and didn't have any problems with the bed shaking anymore. However, her younger brother, who moved into her room, was just a kid, probably around 10 years or so. When he was upstairs, he would often see a shadow in the corner of his eye, and yet, when he turned there, there was nothing. One time, he saw a blurry figure of an old white woman looking out the window on the second story. Another time, coming upstairs, he thought he saw someone take a right immediately upon entering the kitchen. Thinking someone was trying to sneak into his room, he followed the person, and it was just a black shadow that walked and disappeared inside the open pantry that was right by his bedroom door. He was freaked out and ran downstairs. None of the adults believed him, but all of us kids did. Interested in sharing your stories? Submit them to momchronicles at gmail.com or in the description below. Here is the next story. Thank you. I live in the outskirts of Milwaukee. Not the city, but kind of like the town. It's a suburban area, so the neighborhood I live in is very quiet, reserved, and peaceful. I moved into the house when I was three or four years old. My older brother was very rebellious growing up. One night, he and my father were arguing back and forth, and I guess he got angry and went downstairs to the basement, slamming the door shut. In the basement, there is a pitch black area blocked off that nobody ever goes into. It was so dark that if you shined a flashlight into the area, the light beam would just disappear into the darkness with it. On the other side, we had a blocked off area where the laundry room would be and we had an old torn up couch. My brother was still burning off steam so he just sat on the couch which faces the dark eerie area. For some reason, he decided to concentrate on that area, testing his fear. Out of nowhere, a pair of 
red eyes emerged. The red eyes glared at him with malicious intent. My brother, terrified, ran upstairs so fast and told my mom, but she shrugged it off. One weekend, I was helping my mom in the kitchen while we were preparing for lunch. We have a window right in front of the sink that shows the driveway and the part of our front yard. I was bored watching my mom do the dishes, so I decided to look out the window. As I stared off into our driveway, I saw a pale little boy in a white tucked-in button-up shirt, black ironed shorts. His outfit seemed to have come from a past era. I saw him holding a lunchbox skipping up our driveway. Imagine the boy from the Japanese grunge movie. That boy looked just like that. I creased my eyebrows together and got off the chair. I told my mom that I was going to get the door. I ran to the front door and opened it, excited to see my visitor. But to my surprise, no one was there. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up and I ran back to my mom. I told her what happened and she told me that it was just my imagination. Another event occurred when I was in 7th grade. It was around 6 a.m. and I was getting dressed, getting ready for school. I was sitting in the living room when I heard a loud cry and whimper coming through the vents and from the open basement door. I was on my phone at this time and laughed, taking it as a joke. I had never heard these noises before. Only after I let it sink in that I was concerned, so I got up with my siblings and we went downstairs to check. We found my little brother crying hysterically on his bed. He told us that there was a little girl in the room with him, telling him that he shouldn't be afraid of her and that she wasn't going to hurt him. This caused a huge commotion and woke up my parents. They came down from their bedrooms and calmed us down. After we said a few prayers, everything got better and calmed down. I still remember that house to this day. Based on a true story. After the month of not being terrified, things started happening only in our room. Someone was playing around in our room, messing around with our toys and belongings. They would move them around and hide them. I knew if I told my parents, they would just say, you just misplaced them, or maybe you let someone borrow them. So instead, I told my older brother that something is happening, because now, my brother and I who share rooms is acting funny, but only at night when we go to sleep. So my oldest brother came up with the idea of playing a game of camping in our room. All of my brothers and I would sleep in our room and stay up late until we knock out. And would you know it, nothing happened. So my oldest brother just told me not to worry about it. About three days later, my brother started talking in his sleep again gibbering about something. So I shook him awake and asked him why did he do that. I told him about what was going on and he said that he didn't dream of anything. He just shook it off and knocked back out. Every night on after that, I would hear little kids running around or hiding from me like peekaboo. I knew that if I could get my brother to believe me, we could tell our parents, so I found my old tape recorder and decided to record it as soon as my brother started talking. Later on that night, I heard gibberish, but it was nothing too solid, but I did record it. For three days, that's all I got recorded, so on the fourth night, my brother spoke again. I double-checked to make sure that it was recorded and rewinded it a few times to play it back to my parents. As morning came, I was anxious to show my family what my brother said in his sleep. I came to find out that the tape recorder was gone. 
I looked and looked around for it and could not find it. I knew someone took it to protect themselves. It broke me down because now I have nothing to prove or get help for my brother. Later that day, as we were playing in the backyard, my brother kept on staring at the neighbor's bedroom window. I then faced to look at it, and I noticed my brother quietly walking back into our house at the corner of my eye. Then, as I focused on my brother, I noticed a dark figure at the corner of my eyes staring at me from the neighbor's window, but it vanished as soon as I blinked. I then knew something was wrong here. I went inside and told my parents everything. They believed me, and when we went to confirm the story with my brother, he was in our room, under the blankets, shivering and pale looking. My parents took him to the dining room next to the altar and said a prayer. My dad called my uncle to come over right now, and when he got here, my brother became really sick again. After a few minutes of doing a few shaman rituals, my uncle said something about a lady that had left our house, but her kids are here now and she wants them back, but they want to stay and play with us. So my uncle then said that we would have to do another ritual and tie strings around my brother and to make him wear different clothes. We invited our neighbors over during the ritual and we sat down to eat. Out of nowhere, the father said that strange things were happening over the past months. Things like objects falling down and someone arguing or talking from their hallway. My parents and family just ignored it, but I knew that they were also scared. After the party was done and we cleaned up, my brother finally talked to me. He asked me where was our video game, he wanted to play it. I told him that someone borrowed it and we will have to get it back next week. My little brother said that he was tired and headed up to the bedroom. My uncle approached me and told me that everything will be okay because that lady has found her kids and they have left knowing that they were dead and will be together again. My uncle then whispered to me that he knows that they were murdered by the father and were burned alive. I was spooked when he told me that. Later on that night, I went upstairs and heard noises coming up from my room. As I slowly listened, I could hear the video game that my brother wanted to play. I opened our door and my brother said, Why did you lie to me? I found toys, games, and your tape recorder in our closet behind the clothes. This story was told by my aunt. It took place back in the time when they were still kids, around the 90s. They moved into this house and there was a path road that led to the backyard. It was pretty big and empty. My grandpa would wake up every night to check on my aunts and uncles. One night, the kitchen lights were turned on when my grandpa woke up to check on them. He opened their bedroom doors but they were deep asleep, so he thought that it couldn't have been them. Since he didn't think of anything, he turned off the lights and went to sleep. Every day and night, they would hear someone knocking on the windows. However, when they would go check, no one was there. One day, the kids were playing hide and seek. Right when everyone went off hiding, my aunt was left hiding in one of my uncle's room. She was hiding right behind the door. They would come in and couldn't find her. Everyone was found except for her, so she came down and yelled at them. One of my uncles would then say that he came in and swore up and down that there was no one in the room. During one night, in that very same room, my uncle got sleep paralysis. Another night, as he was sleeping, he felt like someone was pulling his blanket. When the family was in the living room, they would hear whispers coming from that room. One day, my grandpa asked the neighbors if anything happened in that house before they moved in. The neighbors told him something terrifying. They said that 
there was a man with a chainsaw in his neck in the closet of a room. That room turned out to be the very same room that my uncle slept in. Right after that, my grandpa decided to look for a different house and they moved out right away.